Here's a common problem you might run into and you might not even know it. If you're going to be installing a fiberglass acrylic tub, a steel tub, and you're going to use mortar underneath to provide you with some extra support. Now, if you position the tub, if you put it in, you can't move the tub around. That's going to be a one problem. You can't use mortar that is too wet. Remember, concrete will shrink. And this isn't concrete, by the way. This is mortar. You don't want to use concrete. You want to use a mixture of sand and cement. But you can see here where it's actually shrank away. And this might not be the best picture. It looks a little fuzzy. You can see here where the mortar, someone had pushed the tub in, set it in, and uh, it might have been tight at one time, but it dried or someone moved the tub. You cannot move the tubs. But you can see here that the gap is wide enough to where it's probably not doing much. And uh, this is kind of one of those things of why even do it in the first place if you're going to end up with this. I do have a couple of suggestions. I already mentioned if you do use mortar, you set the tub, you cannot move it. You can't wiggle it back and forth to where you have gaps in it. You want to just set the tub, press it down, uh, um, get it into position, leave it. You don't want to move it. Moving the tub too much is going to create a problem like this. Second problem is that if you add too much water to the mixture, this mixture you're going to want to have it as dry as you possibly can with it being a little flexible so that you can push the tub in. So this isn't this. I see this a lot. Uh, and and whenever I install a tub, which I'm going to show you a picture of a tub I put in, of course, because huh, I've already learned my lessons the hard way. Um, that uh, you can't use much water, like I said. Get it as dry as possible. Don't move the tub. And there is another solution that would be to use plaster of Paris. I know a lot of the old time plumbers used to use nothing but plaster of Paris and it worked great. I've even used it myself. Only problem is it doesn't have, you don't have a lot of time to work with it. So you can mix it up. I mixed it up one time. I set a, an acrylic shower pan. Not a bathtub. I put the I put the shower pan in there, and uh, it dried a little faster. I ended up needing to pull the pan out. When I pulled the pan out, I ended up separating the the pan. It was supposed to be a one piece pan, but when I pulled it apart, the plaster of Paris wouldn't let the bottom part go. I ended up ruining the pan. I had to go buy another one. And uh, again, don't forget that's why I'm making these videos so that you guys and gals don't repeat the same mistakes I made. So let's just recap and then I'm going to show you a little video at the end here of, of a tub that I put in and how the mortar held up. But just to recap everything, mortar cannot be too wet. Um, the... You can't move the tub around. You know, when you're setting it in, set and move it, get it into position, leave it. And then number three, don't forget plaster of Paris could be another option also. Here's a good example of a mortar, bed of mortar, supporting a jacuzzi tub. And it's sitting on top of, or the mortar is underneath a piece of OSB. And it's nice and tight, actually supporting the tub like it should be.